In this Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this 3D printed print-in-place hinge. It will use a ball and socket for its print-in-place hinge functionality. We will also use parametric modeling features in Fusion 360 so you can change portions of the hinge based on the design you want to use it in. Let's get started by creating a new component. I'll call this component socket. Then I'll create a sketch. I want to create this sketch on the ground plane and then I'll create a center rectangle. I'll click on the origin and then I'll quickly type 20 millimeters, tab 20 millimeters and press enter. Then I need to press R to get some more rectangles. I'll draw a rectangle here and then I'll draw a rectangle here. I want to make these two edges collinear and I'll dimension this piece three and I'll dimension this piece three. Now I need to make some user parameters. So I'll go modify, change parameters. The first one will be tolerance, TOL, and I'll make this 0.4 millimeters. Then I'll make, then I'll make ball and this will be three millimeters. And then I'll go ahead and make height and this will be ball plus two. And then I'll say, okay. So now I can start to design all the pieces here. So first I need to have some space on the edge so everything can rotate. So what we'll do is we'll put a line going right here and then we'll put a line going right here. We can make sure that these two lines are collinear. Then we'll make them construction lines. Click the object, press X, then click the other one, press X, and then they're construction lines. And we can dimension that to be tall, and then they should both be fine. Then we can dimension this distance. And I think it should be ball times two. Then we can actually draw the ball in. So we'll go ahead and get a line, and we'll draw it right here. And then we will get an arc. So we'll create an arc, three point arc. We'll click at the top, then click here. And then for the dimensions of our arc, it will be ball divided by two plus tolerance. Then we can dimension this piece to be the same. And we can dimension this distance to be the same. And now we just need to make sure that there is enough space between this area and here. Then we need to dimension this. This should be ball divided by two plus one. That will give us plenty of space for this to rotate around and have its thickness. So let's finish our sketch. Now we can press E to extrude. I'll click this piece, this piece, and this piece. And then the direction wants to be symmetric. And then the distance wants to be height divided by two. Then I can reshow that sketch. And then I want to make a revolve. I'll click and hold. And I want that profile. And the axis will be this one. And I want to cut. Now I'll create a mirror. And I want to mirror features. I'll click that revolve. And the mirror plane will be the center plane. And then it should cut that on the other side. And I'll say OK. So now we have our ball cut on both sides. Now we'll go ahead and create the next component. So we'll go to the top level and we'll create a new component and we'll call this ball. Then we can create a sketch on the ground plane. So we'll click XY. Then we'll project in that sketch. We can choose sketch entities and we can choose this piece and this piece and that piece. And we'll say OK. Then we can look from the top. Then we'll go ahead and create an arc. And we'll start with a three point arc. We can click here and here. Then we can dimension the radius. It will be ball divided by two. Then we can draw a line from here to here. And we can draw a line from here to here. And we can dimension these two lines the same as the arc. And we can dimension this line the same as the arc. So now we can finish our sketch. Now we're ready to create a revolve. So we'll click revolve and then we'll make sure we select the smaller profile. And then for the axis, we'll pick this center axis and we'll make a new body. Now we'll go ahead and mirror that by creating a mirror. And then we'll choose 
features, we'll choose the revolve, and for the mirror plane, we'll choose the center. Then we'll press OK. So now we can extrude from this piece, and then our distance will be to object, and we'll go all the way to the other object. And we'll say join, OK. Now we need to create two offset planes. Let's hide that original sketch, and then I'll construct an offset plane from here, and the distance will be tall. And I'll say OK. And then I'll create another offset plane, and it'll be from this side, and the distance will be tall. And then I'm going to create a sketch on this first one. So I'll create a sketch, and then I want to project in some features. So first, I want to project in the actual box feature right there. And then I'll press OK. And then I can hide this other construction plane just for a moment. And then I'll hide the original component just for a moment. And let's edit this sketch. Then we need to draw a line. So we'll draw a line right here. And we'll dimension that line tall away. So now that we have tolerance there. And we can make this line a construction line. Click on it, press X. And then we're going to create an arc. We'll click here. Then we'll click on the midpoint of our construction line. Then we can make this arc concentric with this, and that locks everything in place. Next, we just need to draw a rectangle out, and then we can decide how far. So I think what I'll do is I'll draw my rectangle from here over, and then I'll make sure everything is collinear by clicking here and here. And then I can make a tangent with this section right here. And then I'll dimension this rectangle as 20. Okay, so now we're ready to extrude the ball part. So I'll finish my sketch, then I'll press E to extrude, and I want to show the other piece so I can see what's happening. We need to do two extrusions, and I need to click all these pieces, and then I want to go, the extent type will be to object, and what object? I want to go to the construction plane we drew earlier, and I'll make sure this is joined, and I'll press OK. So now I have my piece, I can hide that construction plane, and then I can show the other component, and now you can see that we have a nice ball and socket, print in place, 3D printed hinge, made in Fusion 360 with parametric parameters. Now what we can do is make this piece removable by creating another sketch on top, then we'll project in, we'll make sure we have the body filter, and we'll say OK, then we'll draw a rectangle, we'll click on this line, we'll draw over to here, and now we need to dimension this. We'll dimension from here to here as four. And then we'll dimension from here to here as three. And we'll dimension from here to here the same as this. These distances may need to be adjusted depending on the material you're using for your 3D printing. Then we'll press E to extrude. We'll click these two profiles. We'll drag down and we can do all. That will cut out everything, and we'll say OK. So now we, can, now we can potentially squeeze these pieces in to make it removable. Let's add some fillets. I'll click Fillet, then I'll click this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge, and I'll type 2. And I'll say OK. So now this piece looks really nice. Let's go ahead and activate the socket component, and we'll add some fillets to it. So I'll click Fillet, and then I want to add a fillet here, and here, and here, and here. And we can do this fillet, height divided by two. We'll go ahead and grab these two pieces too. And then it'll be height divided by two. And that makes all of those round. And then we'll go up to the top level component and we'll do our section analysis. So I'll go inspect, section analysis. I'll click this top face. And now you can see that when we go down, we have plenty of tolerance for our ball and socket print in place 3D printed hinge. So hopefully you can make some ball and socket 3D printed print in place hinges with parametric modeling in Fusion 360. Happy 3D modeling and happy 3D printing.